I'm gonna seed my lawn here today over in the cottonwood corner. So I have a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna add to this, uh, this cocktail to put down with my pre-emergent for my seed, okay? So I'm gonna mix out five gallons of product and I'm gonna start with about two gallons of water here. First thing I wanna put in there is tenacity. This stuff is awesome. This is for the pre-emergent, so weeds, so I don't get a big, huge influx of weeds when they come on and into uh, when my, I'm waiting for the grass to grow. So I'm doing five ounces per acre, and so that gives me with five gallons, I need 17 milliliters or 0.58 of an ounce. 3.48 teaspoons is what, what it's calling for. So that's about 3.5 right there. Turn that over, put that in the bucket. I talked to John Perry and for the micrograin, he said put it six ounces per thousand. So six times five, cause I'm doing, uh, mixing up for five is gonna be 30. So six ounces per thousand of the microgreen. Flora green here, he said to do the same thing. Six ounces per thousand. So I need 30 ounces. All right. Give it a little hee-ho shake. All right, so that's 30 ounces of the Air 8. Into the this is a formula that he gave me. He said this is an experimental formula. He basically said this is just P and K. And I do need the P for the seeding project. So he said put this down at six ounces per thousand. So he gave me this stuff. This stuff's super dangerous. It's straight kelp. And this stuff will fry your lawn if you put too much on. So this is a half ounce per thousand. So if I got five times a half, that's two and a half ounces I need. So now I've got the hydrotane. This stuff's supposed to help with retaining moisture in the soil or in your lawn. It's supposed to, I don't know what it does, but it's like a sticker or something makes the moisture stay in there. Nine ounces per 1,000 feet. So there's, this is only 32 ounces and it's only like a little more than halfway full here. And it says you're supposed to put nine ounces in per thousand, so that would be 45. So basically I just need to dump this whole thing in there. And that's gonna be less, a lesser amount uh, for the seeding rate, but that's okay. You know, you, you do what you gotta do and you, you use what you, what you can and when you've got it. So now that I've got all my products in there, I'm just gonna do a mix a -roo here. Get this all mixed up. And then I'm gonna top my bucket off to five gallons. So now comes the hardest part of the operation and that's getting this huge five gallon of liquid into the tank there. This is never easy, always difficult. All right, so this is a big fat danger. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it all in there, but. Let's just try this like this. When you're using this kind of stuff, you need to know how much product you're putting down per every given square foot or every 1,000 square foot section. Pretty well see this section right here is about where I need to seed from about right here. I'm gonna hold the wheel down and then roll it all the way to the end. There it is, you can see right there. Got 48 feet, okay? So that's 48 feet this direction. So you can see here, got 29 feet. So that's pretty much 30 feet, round that up to 30 feet, and then the other one was 48, round that up to 50, so three by five is 1,500 feet. So I know that this sprayer puts out about one gallon per thousand feet, so I calculated for five gallons. So it should cover about 5,000 feet. So once I get done with this section, I should have about three and a half gallons left. So I'm done spraying and I've got about, that's six, yeah, about th three and a half gallons left. So that's about right where I thought it would be. And I put down exactly just about, about the amount of product that I wanted to put down. So the rest, I'm just going to 
spread and spray just right here because I am going to throw some seed or overseed these areas right here because I've got dirt here. And so I am going to put some seed in this area. All right, so there, I'm done with that. I'm just gonna leave that there for a minute while I go do the seeding. So it's time to put the seed down. Going with this, this is the Everest Kentucky Bluegrass by Jacqueline Seed Simplot. This is what I have over here. I'm gonna put it on over here because it's pretty much all I've got. So I've got one and a half thousand feet, 1500 feet. So I need three pounds per thousand. So, so that's four and a half pounds of seed. So I'm just gonna round that up to five pounds of seed, and that's what I'm gonna distribute over there. All right, so I need five pounds of seed. I'm gonna use this little scale here so I can figure out exactly how much five pounds is. I'm just gonna put that on there, zero it out. Okay, so that's one pound right there. And I've got 1,200 milliliters on this thing. So 1,200, I need five of those. Got my seed in here. This is the exact amount of seed that I need. It's a little bit overkill, probably doing about three and a quarter pounds per thousand. You don't need to put that much seed down. All right, it's time to go down with the seed. I've got the drop spreader here, and then I've got this broadcast spreader here. The only time these drop spreaders are good, I find, is when you're putting seed down. It's pretty much the only time I ever want to use one of those for a lawn application. I guess if you want to stripe the lawn with chalk, maybe you can like do some baseball diamonds stuff, maybe that one would be good put chalk down. I saw him doing it at the Monster Rally. So that would be, that would be good for that. But this one is pretty much just only good for putting seed down. just love that it's not sawed. That's why I love it so much, because it's just not sawed. And people are like, why are you planting that grass seed? They just don't understand. With sawed, while it's okay, you don't know what you're getting. With this, I know I'm getting pure Kentucky bluegrass Everest cultivar. It is a little bit breezy out here, and that does worry me just a little bit. I think I'm going to turn on these sprinklers just for a second so I can wet the area down just a little bit and so the grass will kind of stick to the mud and not blow everywhere. I'm just gonna let that run just for a second. I don't want the whole place getting muddy, but I don't want my seed to blow away either. There we go, stop. So now I'm gonna put this seed in here and dial this back all the way to one, to a really low setting. So that's coming out really light. The goal is I need to get the edges just a little bit better because the drop spreader had a hard time with the edge. So it's just barely coming out of the hopper, barely. So I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more. So this area has been especially hard to get to grow because the water just floods out the seed. So, I'm gonna rough this up a little bit. Just put a little bit more seed on down there. Next step is the starter fertilizer. This is a 20, 27, five, basically what you're after when you're seeding is you want the middle number, which is the phosphorus, to be high. If you think about these numbers, this is up, down, all around. 
up it's for the top growth down the roots and then the third number kind of an all-around mix so you got to put down some starter fertilizer this stuff can be hard to find I'm not sure where or remember where I got this from I think I got this a few years ago this bag says it covers 5,000 square feet I've got about 1,500 square feet I'm not exactly sure how much I want to put down but I'm gonna put down about half of this bag about right there all right got my starter fertilizer down now I just kind of want to break it out just a little bit just to set the seed underneath the soil about an eighth of an inch nothing crazy just a light raking steps to put peat moss down peat moss will help to retain the moisture to keep the seed wet while it's germinating um, I hate this stuff it is nasty I mean it's not too bad it's just hey how it comes in these bales it's hard as rock hey how you have to break it up like this so that's decent decent amount if I do like Maybe one more bale, that probably will be enough. So basically, I'm just throwing it out there, trying to get a decent layer. I don't want to use too much of this, because I don't, I only bought two of these, and then I had a half of one, and I would prefer to take one of them back, because I just don't want any left over, because this stuff's a pain in the neck to store. I never have anywhere to put it. I always end up throwing it away or just putting it in my compost pile. So that's it, it's done. Put the peat moss down over the whole thing. I used two and a half bags. Probably could have used a little bit more, but that's fine. So the only thing now I need to do is water, 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 water. If it dries out, it dies out. So it's gotta stay watered. I am gonna go get my roller and roll it just a little bit, and then I will turn the water on. So that's it, folks. That's all she wrote for tonight. Rolled her, seeded her, peat mossed it, Hopefully in about two weeks or 10 days. Six, eight days, 10 days, should be getting some seeding sprouts. Cross your fingers, hope to die. Hopefully we get the seeding going awry. So hopefully we get some seeding going within about 10 days, two weeks or something like that. But that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. I'll see you in the next one.